Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and we are spending the first week of our 2023 travel season along the famed Bird Trail in Southern Utah. So come along. The Burr Trail is a 75-mile route pioneered in the mid-1800s through one of the most sparsely populated areas in the lower 48. A rugged road connecting the tiny hamlet of Boulder in southern Utah with the even smaller locale called Bullfrog on the shores of Upper Lake Powell. It started out as a livestock trail, and it didn't change much for the next 75 years or so. Pioneer Josephine Catherine Chatterley would wrote in 1882 that the Bird Trail is the most godforsaken and wild-looking country that was ever traveled. In 1967, the Atomic Energy Commission widened the trail to facilitate the hauling of uranium ore. In 2011, the first stretch from Boulder through Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument to the border of Capitol Reef National Park's remote water pocket fold district was finally paved following decades of environmental opposition to the paving project. But by and large, it remains one of the nation's most remote roads through a spectacular western desert. We found our boondocking spot for the week right along the Burr's initial paved stretch, within the BLM's Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument and barely nine miles outside of Boulder but a full hour and a half's drive one way to the nearest real grocery store. A short several hundred yard walk from camp leads to a spectacular view of Long Canyon and Steep Creek Canyon stretching off to the horizon. Folks have been asking how we've been making out with our new tow vehicle, a 2022 F-350 Lariat. And frankly, I'm amazed at how capable that truck is pulling our trailer. Folks said that we would feel like it wasn't even back there, and boy, is that the truth. Um, coming down here, I was really pushing it on purpose. We, I was towing it like I stole it. Uh, we were doing probably an average of 75 miles an hour the whole way. Even going up a 10 mile, 6% grade at that speed, uh, we were getting 10 miles per gallon on average. Uh, the truck was in eighth gear at about 1600 RPMs. It was just ridiculous. So I am thrilled with the truck. However, getting in here, getting into this spot here on the bird trail was not without its own drama. Let me walk you over here and show you what I'm talking about. It doesn't look like much here. However, 
there's some very uneven ground as we were pulling in and preparing to back into our site. I had to swing wide to be able to back it in. So the truck was way up on the left bank. So the truck was tilting right. The trailer was way up on the right bank as I was backing up. So it was tilting left. And I didn't realize just how much twist we were getting. Sure enough, the bottom side of the fifth wheel cap on the trailer impacted the driver's side of the truck's bed rail. Following a good 10 minutes of cussing using ex every expletive that I could possibly think of, uh, ended up getting out a rubber mallet and starting to pound everything back into shape and try and get the Retrax bed cover working, at least in a functional manner. I've actually got to think I've got a future in auto body because I was able to get it to the point where everything is functional. Filed a claim with our insurance company and right now I'm in the process of trying to find a body shop further down our route that will is willing to order the parts without actually seeing the vehicle, only seeing photos. That's turning out to be a bit of a challenge, but we'll get through it. We'll get the truck fixed. Um, the We caused also some damage to the fifth wheel we did punch a hole in the fiberglass front cap um, i was able to seal that up with some eternabond roof sealant tape that's going to hold beautifully for the entire season and i'll just get my buddy kyle to take care of that when we get back to salt lake in december now just to make matters extra special as i was trying to pull everything apart and pound everything back into shape i managed to wrench my back and throw it out worse than I've ever experienced in my life. So I was walking around here the first couple of days this week like a 90 year old man. Uh, but I am experiencing rapid improvement and I attribute that in part to the fact that we have a quality mattress in our RV from our video sponsor RVMattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. Improve your sleep while camping with a new RV mattress from our video sponsor, Brooklyn Bedding. They offer four different mattress constructions in 21 different sizes, depending on preference and price point. Everything from standard queen to all of those funky odd RV sizes. Brooklyn Bedding manufactures all of its mattresses right at their factory in Arizona. And RVMattress.com ships them right to your door for free, all rolled up and compressed in a vacuum seal. Just cut the wrap to unroll the mattress onto your bed, then cut the vacuum seal. For our mattress, Brooklyn Bedding starts with a layer of high density foam for a supported base. Just above the base, an eight inch cord of over a thousand individually encased coils provides the essential support. Immediately above the coils is a one inch layer of memory foam and two inch layer of hyper elastic Titan Flex foam. Finally, at the very top is a 1.5 inch layer of antimicrobial copper flex foam with Titan Cool, which is designed to maintain an ideal sleep body temperature of 88 degrees. Every Brooklyn bedding mattress from RVMattress.com comes with both a 10 year warranty and a 120 night risk free sleep trial. Visit RVMattress.com slash Grand Adventure to get 25% off your mattress with promo code GRANDADVENTURE. There's not much to Boulder, the closest thing to our campsite that could be loosely defined as a town. At the last census, Boulder was home to only 226 people, and electricity didn't even reach the town until 1947. Today, you'll find here Anasazi Indian State Park a scattering of lodging, a few fuel pumps, and a couple of restaurants, including, surprisingly, one of the nation's most highly rated restaurants, Hell's Backbone Grill. Anasazi State Park is a tiny site right in the heart of Boulder that showcases an ancient Puebloan village that archaeologists excavated here in the 1950s during the construction of Glen Canyon Dam. The Navajo arrived here in the 15th and 16th centuries, and Anasazi is a Navajo word meaning ancient enemies or enemy ancestors. The Anasazi inhabited this area for some 1300 years, ending more than 700 years ago. Excavations here uncovered 97 rooms, 10 pit structures, and hundreds of thousands of artifacts. 
Many of the structures here have yet to be unearthed. Tree ring dating indicates that timbers used in these structures were cut between the years 1129 and 1169 AD. An estimated 200 residents raised corn, beans, and squash, supplemented by wild game and native plants. The average life expectancy of these ancient Puebloans was 33 to 35 years. Park officials have constructed a replica of what these buildings likely looked like while they were still in use. After the ancient Puebloans left the area, around 1175 AD, for reasons unknown, this area remained uninhabited until the late 19th century. Stay tuned, for when we come back following a quick ad break, we'll sample more from the area including a slot canyon hike, searching for ancient cliff dwellings, and exploring the entire Burr Trail from end to end, from Boulder all the way to the shores of Lake Powell. We last visited Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument and the Boulder area in 2019 to film Grand Adventure episode 104. One sight from that trip that I wanted to introduce Mrs. Grand Adventure to is Hell's Backbone. But at an elevation of nearly 9,000 feet, the Forest Service is warning that the road remains impassable with winter snow. Nevertheless, we'll give it a try. But here, still nearly four miles shy of Hell's Backbone, we're being forced to turn back. This may not look like much, but the snow on the left is too deep and the roads slope on the right combined with the slippery snow and mud, is going to pull the beast right into the ditch. So if you'd like to see more from the Boulder area, including not only Hell's Backbone, but also the Hogback, Devil's Garden, and more, we'll put a link right here on the screen to our episode 104. In the meantime, we're going to return to one of our more favorite stops from our previous visit for some refreshment from the unique Kiva Coffee House, with amazing views across the Escalante River Canyon. So while my back is slowly improving, I am not yet ready for any ambitious hiking. However, there's a short slot canyon right up the road from our campsite called Singing Canyon, which seems like the perfect opportunity for me to get out and loosen this back up a little bit. Singing Canyon, located just a few miles down the road from our campsite, is so named thanks to the acoustics provided by its massive walls. The ease of accessing this slot canyon belies the amount of sheer natural beauty crammed into such a tiny space.
Well, I had heard this hike is short, but that's kind of the understatement of the year. Uh, it's about maybe 250 yards from the road to the end of the canyon, but what a spectacularly gorgeous place. And super easy, even if you're not terribly physically fit, this is a way to get out and experience the Slot Canyon with hardly any effort at all. Because Singing Canyon was so short, I'm going to stretch my bad back a little more by trying to locate some ancient prehistoric cliff dwellings that show up on the USGS topo map just a mile or so from our campsite. I'm bushwhacking through a small side canyon of what's known as the Gulch. There are no established trails here, just some impromptu foot and game paths. I'll have to navigate on my own to try to find this cliff dwelling. I'll try to navigate up this small wash to access the spot. And I've reached my first obstacle. With my back in its current state, I'm not going to be able to negotiate this small rock fall at a pour over in the wash. Instead, I'll try to circumnavigate the rock fall by climbing onto the sidewall of the wash. Well, that worked. There's the rock fall down there. I'm in the right spot according to my GPS, but I'm not finding the cliff dwellings. Perhaps they've since collapsed into a pile of rock, not unlike other piles of rock out here. Perhaps that's the spot. Or maybe that. Or perhaps that? Well, I can't really be sure that we found them or not. But in any event, it was a beautiful chance to get out in nature and stretch that back a little bit. When we come back following a quick ad break to pay the bills, we'll follow the bird trail for its entire length from camp all the way to Lake Powell. Our plan for today is to drive the remainder of the bird trail past our campsite all the way to the shores of Lake Powell. Just east of our camp, the road gradually ascends beautiful Long Canyon. Here at the boundary of Capitol Reef National Park, the pavement ends. This beautiful sandstone reef is the Water Pocket Fold, 
a geologic uplift that extends for nearly 100 miles through three counties. From Capitol Reef National Park east of Torrey, nearly to the shores of Lake Powell. Quickly, we arrive at the Burr Trail switchbacks, the most famous part of this road, where it drops precipitously from one layer of the Earth's crust to another. Now that we're down off the exhilarating switchbacks, let's continue south towards Bullfrog. There's absolutely nothing along this entire drive. However, I'm surprised to discover that as we passed back onto BLM land from the National Park, the asphalt has returned. The only remaining unpaved segment of the Burr Trail is the section within Capitol Reef.
Bullfrog is an outpost, part of the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, operated by the National Park Service. While this year's record snowfall is helping to restore Lake Powell, water levels are still frightfully low. This was the slip for the Halls Crossing vehicle ferry across the lake. It's pretty easy to see why it's not running now. There are two campgrounds in Bullfrog, operated by National Park Concessionaire Lake Powell Resorts and Marinas. This is the full hookup RV park. The other campground is dry camping only. Sites here cost $26 per night, or $13 per night for seniors. So we truly hope that you've enjoyed visiting the Burr Trail of Southern Utah with us. If you like this episode, it is extremely important to us that you give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, that's where you're going to find the comment section where we always love to hear from you after each Grand Adventure, which we air every Wednesday evening. If you're not yet a Grand Adventurer yourself, coming up next week, we're gonna be heading down to a little known area of Nevada known as Little Finland. So make sure now is the perfect time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you come along on each and every grand adventure. We'd also be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next week from Little Finland, please remember life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.